Hey, this is Professor Homo. Welcome to part, it's either part six or part seven. The last part five went kind of long, so I may break that up into two videos. But either way, we're following up our work in Photoshop that we started on our postcard. We have a background image. We have three inset images. I think I even had four, but I, I chose these. We put layer styles on them, which is the stroke and the drop shadow. We did some image adjustments. I didn't do image adjustments to all of them. I would probably do a little bit more, probably lighten up lighten up this one and again some of the image adjustments are levels um, shadows highlights to get rid of real dark shadows which this is a perfect one with his dark shadows let me do this one quick this is the exterior and I'll make sure that I click on this and I'll go to image adjustments shadows highlights and I'll just lighten that up a little bit and actually it comes up as at 35 or so by default 30 is probably fine so I'm gonna do that and I'll even do a little levels on here brighten it up even more kind of make it pop a little bit Heighten the contrast a little bit, and that looks good. And then we do, you could do a little sharpening on these to give a little you know, crispness to the pictures. So that's good with the pictures. Next, now we're going to bring in the logo. We want to bring in our big logo that we did in Illustrator. Now again, we're doing this for position only so that we can see what the layout looks like because when we bring it into Photoshop, we're actually converting it to pixels. It's getting rasterized. And it'll actually doing, do something called anti-aliasing, which is actually making soft edges on it so that it looks smoother to the eye. But the whole idea is we did this with vector art. We don't want to convert it into 200 pixels per inch. So that's why we're doing it for position only. And then we're going to make an EPS of it. And in our final layout, we're going to put this clean piece of artwork over top of it. But just for now, I'm going to highlight this. And you could even, you know, before you copy and paste it, you could even scale it down. If you know it's going to be small, you could scale it down here. You could scale it down in Photoshop too. But I'm going to just copy this. I'll do a Command C and I'll copy everything all at once. And there's different ways you could do this. You could copy different parts at a time. And, you know, that, that's certainly another way to do that. And I'll copy it and I'll go to Photoshop. And I'm going to put this on the left side and I'll just paste it. And you could paste it as pixels. And there it is. And it'll usually paste it the same size as the page. I'll make it a little smaller. And you might be saying, well, hey, don't I want this part being white? And yeah, yeah, you could. We, we, we'll have room to do that. So I'm going to put this up here right now, and I'll just hit return. That's about the size that I want. It's identifying the restaurant pretty well, and I can still see some people having fun in here. Now, a couple things. I pasted it as one layer, and let's see where this is. I should probably put it on top of everything and get it out of this inset pix layer. This is the logo here. Now, I actually may want this as three separate parts so that if I wanted to make the letters white or anything like that. And an easy way to do this, if you let's say you did want to make the letters white, and these, you know, these are hard to read too. You know, all this, all of these, you might want to, want to make white. Um, so maybe even just the bottom part, you might want to make white. Or you may want to take out the Wings Beer Sports. Maybe it's just too hard to read, keeping that little tagline on there. So, so what could you do? Um, well, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just highlight the bottom of this layer one, and make sure you're not getting any any part of it. I'll zoom into it and I'll just kind of copy that, and I'll just do edit copy and it's only copying whatever's on that layer so I'll just do edit copy or actually I'll do edit cut and I'll do edit paste okay and then it got pasted right there so I should put it back roughly where it was okay same thing with this I'm gonna highlight this and what I'm doing is I'm just separating them to their their own layers and if it was an issue where I it would be really hard to do this in Photoshop then then by all means make sure you do it in Illustrator um, so I'm going to highlight this part, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut, and it's saying it can't cut because I'm not on the right layer. I've got to go back to the logo, the main logo layer, where it originally is, and I'll do edit cut now, and then I'll do edit paste, and it kind of pastes it in the middle of the screen, so I'll put it back where it was, roughly where it was. And the reason I'm doing now I have all separate, so I'm just going to call this, you know, the, the icon, and this one will be which one is this that's the you know I'll just call that Buffalo text and I'll call this one wings and maybe all three of these what it might it might be nice to actually group these right away so I keep them all together so I'll do new group from layers and I'll just call it BWW logo and then in this layer 
folder, I'll make sure that I put them in the order that they show up on screen. I like to have them in that order. So the wings would be at the bottom of that and buffalo would be in the middle. And again, what's the point of doing all this? Well, that, that way, if I want to change the color of this to white, I can just go up to layer style and I can give it a color overlay of white. That's the, probably the easiest thing to do. Now, it always shows up by red by default, but I'll just make it white. And, and that looks okay. Okay, same thing if I wanted to change this one. Um, escape, if I click on that. If I wanted to make this one white or this one black, let's say I wanted to make it black, same thing. I'll go to layer style, color overlay, and I'll make it black. And it's a little easier to read. And then if I wanted to do some layer effects, like for example in this layer if I wanted to do an outer glow, maybe I want to do a little outer glow, I'll make it white just so I could see it a little better. I'm not doing it for an effect and their style guide says don't put all these effects on it, but I'm only doing it to make it read a little bit better from the background. So now outer glow is kind of like drop shadow except it goes an equidistant amount around and you know you have opacity settings, you shouldn't have to worry about noise. The only ones you're going to worry about pretty much are going to be your spread and size. Spread is going to make it harder. It's going to give it a harder edge. Size is going to make it blurrier. So I'm going to increase the blurrier. I'll even give a little spread to just give a little more fullness. I don't want it really noticeable. I don't want people to go, oh, look at the big glow on there. I just run it real subtle. Matter of fact, I'll even turn down the opacity of it a little. I just want it to be able to read a little easier and not get lost. So that's all I really want with that. Matter of fact, I'm going to put it back, back up to like 70. And I'll hit OK. And then same thing with this one. I could put a drop shadow on here if I wanted to because there's some light areas behind it. And I want it just subtle. You know, you don't want the, the effect to be really noticeable. You don't want to put, you know, bevel and emboss or anything like that. I just want to go in here and where I could, if there's effects here already, I could double click and I'll go to drop shadow. And you can see it's a hard, little harder drop shadow. Very, very, um, it's not very far. It's only five pixels. And I'll maybe expand it just, to, you know, out to like 10. And you can see it's very hard looking. It's very, you know, it's standing out. I don't want it to stand out so much. So that's why I'm just going to turn down the opacity a little bit more. Because I don't need it. And matter of fact, I might even turn the distance down a little bit. You know, maybe like 9 or 8. I don't want it that, that much. I'd probably want distance down a little bit. If anything, the size I'd want a little bigger, a little blurrier, so that when I turn it down, it's less noticeable. So I have my opacity down. So I, I don't want it... I have around 30, 35 is fine. Just so it, it just so I see it over dark, over light areas, but not really over dark areas. It shouldn't even be noticeable. So the very subtle kind of outer glow, drop shadow for those two things. I don't really have to do anything on the Buffalo logo. If I did put a little a little glow on it, I'd probably do a very subtle one. And I could do a very subtle one. I'll go layer style and do outer glow. And I'll make this white. And I'll increase the size so it glows out a little bit. And you can see it has a nice little glow there. And then I'll really turn down the opacity because I don't want it too noticeable. And I'll increase the size even a little more. So it's, it's very subtle, like almost a haze. And I'll turn down the opacity just a little bit, just to make it stand out a little bit better. OK, and then also, I think this could be nudged up a little. I want to make sure it's like like the real one again. Now, the thing you might wonder about, like, well, you said we're going to use our real logo as an EPS file. We're not. This is just for position. What about the glow and shadow and all this neat stuff we're putting on here? Well, we're going to be able to leave this in here on the logo. We're going to be able to leave this in here, and I'll show you how. Now, before I do that, you can link these. They have a thing in here where you can link layers. And what that does is that way they move together. You know, even with the even with the folder closed, if you just click on the on the folder, they have auto select. They do have auto select, and you could auto select the group. But I usually like to just keep it to layer. But if you link those together, you can move that around a little bit. So if you decided to put this over here and the pictures on the other side, but I'll keep this here for now. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'll put a little headline down here, and I'm not sure what, you know because you just have the edge of a table. I'm just going to draw a box down at the bottom and I'll, I'll put it kind of above everything. I'll put it above the logo or maybe it should actually be at the bottom because it's right above the people. So I'm just going to draw a box down here and I guess it could even go across. It could kind of fit behind everything. Now here's a weird thing. It has a dotted line and there's and I want to make sure the stroke is off. So I'll make sure that's off. And even if it's not the color I want, what I could do here, I'm actually going to 
give it a layer because it becomes a layer there it is it's called rectangle one and I could just call it you know yellow rectangle and if I want it the same color as this there's different ways you could do it you could double click right on it and you could sample that that's one way to do it or I could give it a color overlay okay so I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and I might even do something like turn the opacity down you know if it's a little strong you know I may want to show some of the stuff behind I may not want it really strong but I may just want a hint of the color which is which is fine I'll apply the transformation and I'll put a tagline on here and I'll do something new now be careful when you go to click on top of this you see that circle down there on my icon that means it's gonna kind of do a, it's gonna fill the shape with text I don't want that I just want to click so I want to just be able to click somewhere and just type something you know and I'll, I'll just type some you know get out tonight how about that and and for my font I'm gonna make sure that I use my Aachen bold because that's what they recommend for headline so I'm gonna use my character palette and you could slide sideways on this and I want to make sure it doesn't compete too much they don't really have an up and down arrow which is I wish they kinda of had an up and down arrow on here and I'm just gonna move this down a little bit and kind of make sure it lines up with the logo and, and that looks alright I'll move my logo up so it doesn't compete as much and you could use a different font here if you want um, or you could try it to see how it looks in all caps that's not all caps this is all caps so if you wanted to do it in all caps and make it a little smaller get out tonight that way it doesn't I don't know I guess I'll just do that for now and I'll try to line it up with the bottom of my picture here or maybe I'll move my picture I'll move it down a little bit I like it in the middle but I also want my pictures so I'll, I'll kind of highlight these three pictures and make sure and shift click on the background and just nudge my pictures down a little bit so they all kind of line up down there so so that's okay and I may want to put what what can I do with this text I could put a little stroke on it I could put a little glow maybe I'll put a stroke on it I'll see how it looks with a uh, stroke on it and I'll do that from my layer style and I'll just put a little stroke on it and certainly not black I'll make a white stroke on it and it's like three pixels maybe I'll make it two should be fine and I'll put it on the outside and also maybe it, even a drop shadow put a little drop shadow on it just a little bit maybe 10 and that looks okay so that has a kind of a nice look it's a little it's a little busy down here but I think that looks nice now so and one thing I forgot to do I should have done this a long time ago but I'm gonna do file save as and I'm gonna make sure I save my file and it's gonna be in my I'm gonna go to my sample folder and this is my the one that I'm working on right now and I'm gonna call this um, and I, you could put the B in front of there for Buffalo but I'll just call it I'll just make sure it's a, a PSD file so I'll make sure I change my image to Photoshop and then it'll put the PSD for me so that's all I want for the for that except it's not the logo it's gonna be postcard so let me put postcard here so this is P4 BWW postcard HOMA PSD and this is my Photoshop file and from what I'm looking at I think it's pretty well done and what we're gonna do now is actually start almost breaking it apart so that we could bring it into InDesign so if this is our finished layout which I think looks okay we're gonna bring it into InDesign next